edition of Mo Mondays. When I say one, two, three, happy Mo Mondays, you answer joyeux Mo Mondays. Are you ready? Because we speak for English here. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. One, two, three, happy Mo Monday. Joyeux Mo Mondays. Oh, you are good. Well, that thought came to me when I talked with a good friend over a cup of coffee. And she basically had muscular dystrophy, or she has muscular dystrophy, and she couldn't walk for the first 23 years of her life. And I said, you're walking now. And she said, yeah, I am walking now. Well, some might construe that to be a miracle. And she said to me, Falk, no, that's not the miracle. The miracle is that for the first 23 years of my life, over 8,000 times, every night, I dream that one day I could walk. The dream is the miracle, not the walking. I decided that precise, that precise moment to go that way. Uh, 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 it's not a path, it's just across the, the, the uh, uh, forest, you know? And I was walking, I stood up somewhere, I arrived at a, a cliff, and then I stood up there. Somebody came by me, and this is one thing that is very important. It was uh, November 21st. November 21st is actually the date of my uh, past uh, father. Because my father passed away in 21, so it was probably five or six um, years later than that. So I was just standing by the cliff. Somebody came and he asked me, how do you feel? You feel like and I didn't want to speak to anybody. That time, I went and studied my French. So I was a fr full-time French. Um, uh, I followed the full-time French course. And I started to write with my right hand. And then I continued. And I learned my fifth language. And I'm so happy that gave me opportunity to go and study French. So even though it was a really a bad thing what happened to me, but it really gave me so much opportunity to learn, grow, and you know, be strong. And Nora took care of my brother for the last 23 years of his sickness. In the last 10 years, he was taking 50 pills a day. You name any disease he had it. But still, he was still a very jolly, good fellow, good temper, good humor. I remember when I saw him the last time, I went to see him from Montreal. I went to his, to his home. He was still lying in bed in the afternoon because it was too much in pain to get up. And we had a very intimate chat. He told me, how much he loved Nora and his kids. He told me how much he loved his brothers and sisters. He told me that he thought he had become a harsh burden for his wife Nora. And he had made his final arrangement. I look at him and I said, oh man, I love you. I want to see you back in two months. I want to see you back in two months. I'm coming from Montreal for you. What I wanted more than anything was to be funny. I, I, wanted to be the, I wanted to be the funny guy, so I would try to tell jokes. Uh, tr I would try to tell jokes in, in the real, in the real sense of the word. And uh, instead of uh, that, basically, I didn't get the response I wanted. Nobody laughed at my jokes. They laughed at me. And uh, so I was, I was basically thoroughly put down between my friends and my teachers. And, and I ended up, uh, I ended up going from being an awkward. Um, introvert to being an insecure loner with about zero self-esteem. I honestly think that what defines us is hearing other people's stories that resonate within us, that help us figure out who we are, right? Um, so please, don't hide your light.